Well, there are serious concerns today coming from Canada's agricultural sector that China has stopped buying Canadian canola. Canada exports more than $2.7 billion worth of canola to China, which represents 40% of all of our canola exports. Observers are linking the development to the dispute between Canada and China, triggered after Canada agreed to consider the extradition to the U.S. on fraud charges of Meng Wanzhou, a top executive of China's Huawei Corporation. The apparent retaliation by China against Canada's agricultural sector has many producers deeply concerned. To look at the situation and what's at stake, I'm joined now by Brian Innes. He's the Vice President of the Canola Council of Canada. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Okay, first of all, confirm to us exactly what the situation is, because this was only confirmed by your council last night in a press release. You said, look, we now, it's official that there are no, no purchases being made by China of canola. That's right. We understand from our members who export the canola from Canada to places all around the world is that Chinese buyers are unwilling to purchase Canadian canola at this time. So unlike what we heard a few weeks ago where one company uh, had been suspended, yeah. now we're hearing that all of our exporters are saying that the Chinese buyers are not purchasing Canadian canola. Um, the, this came up in question period today. Uh, po the politicians have, are on to it because of such, so much at stake. Uh, the Canadian government says they're looking into it. What's China saying? What are they saying either to, to producers or to Canadian authorities? Mm -hmm. Well, what China has said publicly is they're concerned about what they call hazardous organisms, yeah. which are really not uncommon when we think about trading food all the way all around the world. Yeah. And in this case, really what that refers to are things like weed seeds. So there are technical discussions going on between our experts at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and the Chinese government equivalent about what are those hazardous mm -hmm. organisms and do they cause a risk and how do they cause a risk if they do. But I thought all of that had been resolved because if we cast our minds back the last trip by the Canadian delegation to China, uh, I remember Christian Freeland, Foreign Affairs Minister at the point, that was all supposedly solved, wasn't it? I mean, we'd heard that there was a resolution to the, the, this impediment. That's right. In, in the fall of 2016, Prime Minister Trudeau and his counterpart in China uh, talked about an agreement to keep canola going to China until next year, in 2020. What, what's been raised lately have been other concerns related to other, other uh, what the Chinese are calling uh, hazardous concerns. Mm -hmm. the, okay, in your mind, is it more politics than health? Is it, how do you explain this development? Do you, do you connect it? I know a lot of observers are connecting and saying it's patently obvious. It's this. really difficult for us to know what's causing it. What we do know is that whenever Canada and China have discussions, whether they're good or bad, canola is often part of those discussions okay. because Canada exports a lot of canola to China. In fact, canola is the number one export from Canada to China. About 17% of all of the exports that we send to China are from canola. How much is the industry hurting? Because I've, I've seen one estimate saying that already there's been something like a billion dollars of loss. Is that, is that accurate? Well, it causes a lot of uncertainty in the industry and it causes a lower price for producers who need to sell their crop from last year. Mm -hmm. so what it means is that the longer this drags on, the longer those prices are lower and the more impact it has on growers and everybody in the industry and their ability to bring bring value from export markets back here to Canada. For canola, we export 90% of everything we produce in Canada. And so when the price falls, that means less value from elsewhere back to Canadian communities. If I'm a canola producer, can I find alternate export markets uh, in the short term, and, you know, maybe not the long term, but mm -hmm. it, it, are there alternate alternatives for producers? 40% of our exports go to China and it's really hard to replace a market of that size. Yeah. We do export canola seed to other places in the world like the United States, like Europe, like Japan, Mexico, Bangladesh, Pakistan and the United Arab Emirates. So we do have other markets. The challenge is that China is such a good customer of ours usually and it's hard to fill a market of that size. So where is this going? I mean, uh, I mentioned, you know, you're asking the government to get on this and you're hoping that the government can negotiate this. If this uh, uh, irritant of the extradition or potential extradition of Wang Wanzhou, uh, Meng Wanzhou uh, continues, uh, canola is being held hostage, where does it go from here? It's really difficult for us because farmers are planning a long time into the future, as is everybody else in the industry. So what happens if we don't send our canola to China, it stays on farmers on farmers uh, um, places within their bins and they're unable to sell it or they sell it at a lower price. So what we see hopefully is that this can be resolved in the near term. We're, we're not hopeful it can be 
resolved immediately, but we are encouraging the government to resolve it as quickly as we can. If uh, Meng Wanzhou, the executive from Huawei, is extradited, that, will that decision will be made in the coming months. Uh, does this become at least permanent for this year, this, this retaliation from China? We're hopeful we can resolve it much, much quicker. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to understand how things can be linked. We don't have that information, and, and all we can do is speculate. But what we would like to happen is the government of Canada to resolve it as quickly as, as possible, and that requires our scientific experts talking to theirs and really trying to get to the bottom of why there's a disagreement around these things. High-level de delegation? Because we don't have an ambassador right now. John McCallum has come back. But high-level delegations, uh, we saw this resolution. We mentioned it only the last time there was a major trade uh, trip to China. Is it, is it going to take sort of, sort of high-level negotiations? Sometimes it does take high-level interaction. As you referenced, uh, we've had prime ministers involved three times over the last decade to keep our canola going from Canada to China. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we're, we're not a stranger to, to when uh, things can get political with China. In this particular case, we're hopeful it can be resolved through technical discussion. Sounds like a rocky ride for canola producers in this country. It is very rocky. And, and you know, this isn't the only risk that our industry faces. And producers are going to take really tiny seeds and put them into the ground in the next few weeks and hope they get enough rain and hope mm -hmm. they get enough sun, not too much sun and not mm -hmm. too much uh, heat, and, and try to get it off before the snow comes in the fall. So producers face a lot of risk. They're, they're incredibly resilient. Um, this is unfortunately one more that they don't need. Okay. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming in and uh, giving us the background on it. Thank you. It's my pleasure.